the Ministry of Secondary Education has developed a distance learning platform for students of secondary education in Cameroon. A series of lessons taught by qualified teachers for secondary school students. Under the stewardship of Professor Pauline Nalovalyonga, in collaboration with the Ministry of Posts and Telecommunications, CAMTEL, CRTV and UNESCO. We are introducing distance learning as another teaching and learning method which is different from the traditional classroom setting that you are all used to. In the distance education mode, you are not with the teacher in person, so take your time, relax, listen to the teacher, take down notes and visit the following links for any questions or answers to your questions. Take it in your stride. This is Cameroon's solution to COVID-19 and beyond. Professor Nalova Lyunga, Minister of Secondary Education. Welcome to this session of distance learning. I will be taking for geography from four. My name is Chair Vitalis Nji, your geography teacher. Before we go to our lesson of today, we would like to correct the assignment that was given in the last session. <clears throat> in the last session, we were asked the following questions. We were asked the question, what do you understand by terrace farming? What do you understand by terrace farming? And two, what do you understand by dry farming? What do you understand by dry farming? Now, terrace farming, involves the cutting of flat terrace, terraces on a steep hill or steep slope to create lowland and conditions for farming. Terrace farming involves what? The cutting of slopes or steep hills into flat lowlands to create space or environment for farming and also reduce soil erosion. That is terrace farming. Create cutting of slopes or steep hills into steps that are flat that can be available, can be make, can make farming possible. That is terrace farming. And then uh, it is a form of land reclamation also because most of these lands that you, terrace farming is cultivated is, is carried out on are steep slopes that cannot be used for any other thing. But now, if you practice terrace farming, you have reclaimed or you've turned the land to be able to be used for something, to yield something. Uh, it is also a technique of soil conservation. I said the first thing is that when you cut the slope into steps, you reduce soil erosion. And by reducing soil erosion, you are already practicing soil conservation. This is a picture of terrace farming, where the slope is cut into steps. Look at steps. This, this, is, a, this is a farmer that's climbing. But now the slope was steep. If it was not cut into steps, the farmer will not be able to climb. Crops will not be able to, cult to be cultivated. And so the flat steps that have been cut on the slope are providing what ground for farming and they also go a long way to reduce what soil erosion through runoff that runs down the slope from the top that is uh, our uh, uh, the definition or the meaning of terrace farming i said it is a cutting of slope into steps to provide land for farming and also a form of soil conservation by reducing soil erosion we now move to the second question what do you understand by the term dry farming? What do you understand by dry farming? This is the cultivation of crops without irrigation, but rather soil moisture is conserved through mulching. You know, in drier tropics where water is limited, irrigation is practice. That is bringing in water from elsewhere into areas where there is no water to water the crops. That is irrigation. But in a situation where Water is not used. However, soil moisture content is conserved through addition of ground under the crops. This is called mulching. That is equally uh, dry farming. Again, dry farming can also be defined as what? The addition of grass or, or veg vegetation spread over the, gr the ground or under crops to contain and maintain soil moisture content. It is still dry farming that is decaying vegetation is spread over the soil to keep water and prevent the soil from uh, drying up and cracking or the little water is there from evaporation 
you cover it with decaying vegetation or dead plants and animals are spread over this, the, the soil or under crops to protect the soil from drying up or little water is found there to evaporate. It is, it is this kind of uh, farming system is common in semi-arid areas. <laughs> Now let's move to our lesson of today, which is <coughs> Von Tonnen's Agricultural Land Use Model. Our lesson is titled Von Tonnen's Agricultural Land Use Model. Before we go to our lesson, let's look at the lesson overview. Lesson overview. We are going to see the objectives of this lesson, the previous knowledge before this lesson today. We are going to see a real life situation in which we will reduce the problems and also maybe provide solutions. And we are going to see the learning activities. We are going to go through the learning activities in this lesson. We are going to see, uh, go through this, have the summary of the lesson, exercise, and then we culminate with an assignment before we end the lesson. The learning objectives include, we are going to, at the end of the lesson, we are going to be able to state the aim of von Tonnen's model of land use. We are going to also state the principles of locational range brought up by von Tonnen. We are going to be able to state and explain his assumptions on bringing up this model of land use and then his conclusions. We are going to see the conclusions of the, of the model. On previous knowledge, we, are, we had uh, problems facing agriculture. Previous knowledge, problems facing agriculture in the tropics. That was our last uh, lesson during the last session. Now, state any two problems facing agriculture in the tropics for us to understand or to remind ourselves with our previous knowledge. State any two problems facing agriculture in the tropics. They include drought conditions in the warm tropics, humid conditions in the wet tropics, poverty of farmers, and inability to buy farm inputs have given two physical problems. Dry drought conditions in the warm tropics that bring in uh, absence or shortage of water for crops and animals. Humid conditions in the wet tropics where there's high amount of rainfall that leads to leaching. And I've brought a human problem, poverty of farmers and inability to buy farm inputs. Question two, name the different forms of intensive Farming. Name the different forms of intensive farming. Intensive farming, we have dairy farming, we have uh, 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 ranching as forms of intensive farming, which is farming that, comes, that is, is, is done on a small piece of land with high labor and high output per unit land. That's intensive. Uh, market gardening is also an example of intensive farming, horticulture, viticulture, dairy farming. They are done on small pieces of land, labor intensive and high yield per unit area. Now, let's look at a real life situation. The real life situation in our lesson today. While traveling from your village to the capital city, you observe farming around the capital city is dominated by market gardens. Unlike in your village, where it is cocoa yams, it is plantains, it is uh, uh, yams, it is maize, cocoa, and other uh, 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 commercial crops. Now, you have observed this difference in what? The kind of crops that are around the city center as you are traveling to the city, and you compare to the kind of crops that are in your village. They are very different. In the city centers, there are mostly what? Garden, gardens around the city centers. So what is the problem? What is the problem in the problem in the real life situation? Why do you think farming patterns is as you have observed? Why do you think the farming patterns as you are moving from your village to the capital city is as you have observed? Now, we are going to answer these questions as we go through our lesson and we will come back to the situation, the real life situation and get the answers. Now, von Tonnen uh, 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 model of land use was an attempt to explain the layout of agricultural landscape 
What is Von Tonnen's land use model all about? It was an attempt by Von Tonnen. Von Tonnen was a German agronomist and agriculturalist who developed this model in a bit to explain the layout of agricultural landscape as you move from the city center to the interior. As you move from the city center to the interior. He developed this model uh, as a skilled farmer which was published in his book entitled The Isolated State. Von Tonnen, this German agronomist or German agriculturalist, developed his model in a book entitled The Isolated State, which he tried to explain the layout of the patterns of the layout of agriculture from the city center or the market to the interior. What were the aims of his model? One of the objectives we had was what? To bring out the aim of the model, the model of von Tonnen on land use pattern. One of the aim was to show how and why agricultural land use varies with distance from the market. To show how and why agricultural land use varies with distance from the market. Now, the main principles of the concept of, 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 the con of his concept were the principles on which von Tonnen built, built his concept were economic range or locational range. We are going to see it. Economic range or location range. He used the principle of economic range to analyze the difference profit per unit area based on number of assumptions. Meaning that economic range according to von Tonnen, was the profit made from locating your farm in a particular area. The profit made from your produce of your farm as you locate it in a particular area. That is economic rent. Now, he said he used a number of principles to, of economic rent to analyze the different net returns per unit area because, because of a number of assumptions to be able to have the principle of economic rent, there were a number of assumptions that he used so as to analyze or to use economic rent to analyze the differences in the location of your of agricultural land uses as you move away from the market. The first assumption of von Tonnen's land use model is this: he assumed that the city is located in in this that the, the city is located in the central in the central. Of the isolated state and this city is where the market is found therefore according to him the market is located in the center of the isolated state the isolated state is surrounded by unoccupied wilderness that's within that isolated uh, 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 within out of the city center or the market the rest of the land is a vast lying land isolated wilderness. He termed it unoccupied wilderness. The next assumption was what? Soil quality, soil fertility, and climate is the same all over the isolated state. He first of all assumed an isolated state and that at the center of it was a central place where the market is found and out of central place was a, an occupied wilderness. And out in this central state or isolated state climate and soil facility is the same throughout and there was one or there is one mode of transport and this mode of transport is the ox pulled cart the ox pulled cart is a, an olden days means of transport where a cart was built and was dragged by horses or oxes and von Tonnen used the ox pulled cart as the only means of transport in his assumptions Von Tonnen, as looking at the conclusions, Von Tonnen concluded or uh, concluded the pattern of rings around the city based on land cost and transport cost. He concluded that the pattern of agriculture occupied or formed rings around the city as you are moving away from the city with respect to the cost of land and the cost of transport. Now, within these rings that are uh, showing the different patterns of land use in terms of agriculture from a city to the interior or to the wilderness with respect to cost of land and transport, in zone one, he said, he, 
he said it was dedicated to dairy and market gardening because the products of dairy farming and market gardening are perishables. Milk, milk is a perishable and it, according to him, should be practiced at the city or just the first ring from the city center. The next zone, zone two, was the production, uh, uh, zone two for production and harvest of forest products. Zone three for extensive field crops such as grains. And zone four for ranching or animal rearing for ranching. As you can see on your screens, according to Von Tonnen, the city center has the market and the various patterns of agriculture were in the form of rings round the city center into the wilderness. Zone one, he said, is for perishables and market, market gardening and perishables, which is veg cultivation of vegetables and uh, 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 dairy farming. Zone two, zone two for intensive uh, uh, forest products, forest products, and then zone three for extensive grain farming, field farming, plantation agriculture, and zone four for for plant for ranching and animal products. That is zone four. All right, and he called this landscape, this landscape, the wilderness, away from the city center. He called it the wilderness, according to Von Tonnen. Okay, let's use an example to exemplify Von Tonnen's model of land use pattern. We are going to consider three farming activities, market gardening, maize, beef, and cattle farming. Now, market gardens or market gardening, which involves the cultivation of vegetables, perishables, such as fruits, uh, uh, vegetables, tomatoes, of high competitive bidding. They have a high competitive bidding around the market. And so, since they have a high competitive bidding, they can be able to pay the cost of land around the market and also make profits. And that is why market gardening takes the first ring around the city center because of perishability and high demand. Because of the high demand, the turnover is high, is able to cover the cost of production and then at the same time, uh, 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 half profits. And this market garden now occupies the first ring out of the city center. High location rent, location rent and uh, uh, steep sloping. The curve, if we are going to exemplify it, we are going to bring out a diagram, the curve of Vontonen, that shows the, the limits of each of these zones. And the, that of market gardening is very steep sloping. We are going to see as we move ahead. Now, for maize, we said zone two is for forest products, crops that are growing like in the, like growing like a forest. Maize is likely to pay high rents for the for zone two, which is because of bulky, because of bulk and cost of transport. Now, transporting maize to the market, which is grains, is not too grains are not too heavy and can easily be transported, and so. Will be, it, the, the, the cost of transport will be lesser and you'll be able to make profit and pay for locational rent and occupies zone two. Beef or cattle ranching. Yeah, beef cattle will go in for the less competitive land, which is zone three next to uh, 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 zone two. That's why we have ranching, rearing of animals. Now, this is the curve, the Von Tonnen curve that shows the different zones or rings of farming patterns from the city center. We consider this area here to be the center. Now, the first ring, this is the first ring, vegetables occupied by, known as zone one, perishables and dairy farming, dairy products like milk, dairy farming like vegetables in zone one. They are able, their demand is high, they are able to pay the high rents and cover the cost and make profits. Zone two, which is extensive uh, 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 cultivation of tree-like crops or forest, wheat, maize are examples. They are in zone two. They are able to be transported to the market at a lower cost because the grains are lighter and not heavy. And then zone three, cattle rearing, which is heavy to transport at the same time, and they need open space, and they are now in this zone three, which is uh, uh, 
uh, uh, for cattle rearing, for beef. And they are able to, the, the land at this level is less competitive and less costly. To locate here, your farm here, the cost of land is reduced compared to zone two and compared to zone three. Means the most expensive land, the most competitive uh, 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 pattern is perishables, which is around the city center, pay the highest rents. Next is wheat, and then we have cattle rearing. Now, the, there's the limit of cultivation of each of these zones is where there's an intersection with the next. Therefore, if you cultivate vegetables outside this intersection with the next line, with the next curve, you are going to cultivate at a loss. You will not be able to make gains. You will be cultivating at the losses. So at this level, at this level, where there's an intersection with the next uh, 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 pattern of cultivation, there is, or that is the limit of cultivation of zone one. Now, the next intersection is here for zone two, for zone two, we have here, where wheat or maize can be cultivated. Beyond this level, you are cultivating at a loss. Cost of production will be more than the profits made at this level. And these areas are called the critical soil soil pain. And for zone zone three, this is the last the the, the, the the limit of cultivation. All right, and remember the cost of land is reducing as you you move away from the city center and cost of transport increases as you move away the city the city center these are the fundamental aspects of von Tonnen's model of agricultural land use those products vegetables are heavy milk is heavy high cost of transport located at the city center wheat lighter easy to transport and then not competitive not, the demand is not as high as that of vegetables and perishable and milk zone two and the rest it moves on to cattle all okay the conclusions of von Tonnen's model conclusion of von Tonnen's model according to him land values decreases with distance from the city center this means that as you leave the city center we have the highest amount paid to land as you are moving away the value of land is decreasing. Different land uses, different land use activities are contained in concentric rings. He used concentric rings to, de, de, uh, to, to show the different land uses as you are moving away from the city center to the uh, 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 wilderness. And they are, because of the homogeneous climate, homogeneous soil fertility, this, the, these areas of land use as concentric. They are round, occupying the same distance from all angles or to all angles from the city center. And this is based on transport. The most productive activity is located in the, in the city or near the city center. Most productive activity located in the city or around the city center. We have seen that perishables have high demand dairy products have high demand and they are the most lucrative where are they located according to von Tonnen, around the city center and occupy the first ring now the intersection point between one crop type and the next is the margin of transference as i was showing in the graph of von Tonnen, that this is the intersection point from one type of crop to the other where they intersect is the margin of transference once you go up beyond that intersection and start cultivating, you are cultivating at a loss. Cost of production is going to be higher than cost of uh, than profit made. That's what we mean by uh, 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 the intersection point between one crop type and the next is the margin of transference. And now, what is margin of transference? The limit where one crop gives way to another because it's no longer profitable to cultivate that crop beyond that limit. Beyond the limit, I mean, where the, the graph for the, the next crop intersects with the next with that of the next crop, it is the margin of transference. And the margin of transference is the limit where crops 
can provide, can be grown successfully and gives you profit. Once you move beyond that limit, you are producing at a loss. Cost of production is more than profit made. And no farmer will be able to, be, uh, to go beyond that. At this point, the revenue at the, trans, the margin of transference, the, 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 uh, the total revenue equal total cost. We are just operating as a boss. The total revenue is equaling is uh, 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 equals total cost. Let's go to let's sum, uh, go to the summary of the lesson and reflect on the situation, the real life situation that we had, wherein uh, you were traveling from your countryside or from your village to the city center. You observe that the crops that were grown in your village are different from those in the city center. That as you were leaving the village, cocoa yams, uh, cassava, cocoa were planted. But towards the center, you, you started seeing perishables. You were seeing perishables, vegetables. What was the problem in the situation? You, the problem was what? Variations in the layout of agricultural landscape. There is variation. The problem was there is variation in the layout of agricultural landscapes. Meaning that diff different as aspects of agriculture are practiced in different places, depending now on the cost of production and cost of transport as you move from the market to the interior. That was the problem. Why do you think the farming pattern is as you observed? Why do you think the farming patterns you observe from your village to the, to the market, to the city, are as the way you observe them? Why? Because of the high competitive bidding for market gardening around the city center and high demand. Once there is a high demand for a particular farm produce, that farm produce will situate where the demand is. And the, since the demand is in the city center, you find that the, farm, the, 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 the crop will be planted or be cultivated around the city center. And in our case of Ontonian, perishables and dairy products were of high demand and they occupied the first concentric ring around the city center. What is the relevance of this lesson? What is the relevance of this lesson to learners? Now, learners will be able to sustainably manage agricultural activities. Instead of carrying or cultivating rice near the city center, you will understand that the demand of rice may not be as a demand for other farm, uh, for other crops. And so you take rice where it, uh, the cost of production will give you the highest gain. Because of land prices or the cost of land in the city center, rice will not be able to be competitive enough to pay the rents on land. And so you bring in the farm, the, the crop that will pay the highest rents for land and also give you and, and also make a gain. That is the essence. That is the relevance of the lesson. You'll be able to, to sustainably manage agricultural activities. As you got this lesson, you will, not be, you will not be the kind of farmer that will take plantation and bring to the city center. They will not be able to cover the cost of land in the city center. <laughs> Exercise. What is the main aim of von Tonnen's model? What is the main aim of von Tonnen's model? The main aim of von Tonnen's model was to show how and why agricultural land use varies with distance from the market or distance from the city center. How agricultural land use varies from with distance from the city center or the market. Meaning that why and how we have different types of crops planted as you leave the market or the city center and you are moving into the interior. What is the principle? The next question. What is the principle of von Tonnen's model? He had a lot of he had a number of principles. What is the principle of von Tonnen's model? Economic range, meaning that he used economic range to explain the model, to exemplify his model, and he used a number of crops: maize, wheat, perishables, and dairy farming, dairy products, to explain his model. That crop or that activity that would be able to pay rents for land and also make the profits will, will occupy the highest or the, the most expensive land, and that is around the city center. 
economic range where the, ref the returns met from selling your products and removing the cost of production. That's called economic rent. Paying the rent for the land, selling your products, and then having the products, the, the, the profits. It's economic rent. Now, state, state, third question, state two assumptions of von Tonnen's model. Two assumptions of von Tonnen's model. The economic rent was explained using a number of assumptions. The first is what? The city is located at centrally within a, an isolated state meaning the market is at the center of his area of research what he called the isolated state now he also assumed that the isolated state is surrounded by unoccupied wilderness vast land that is unoccupied that anybody can go in and cultivate the third or the third assumption is that what that the land was homogeneously flat the fourth assumption was that the land or the wilderness had homogeneous climate and homogeneous fertility. Means the soil was the same. Soil fertility was the same all over, all round. Climate was the same all over, all round. And transport only increased with distance from the city center. Another assumption was that the only mode of transport was ox pulled cart. A cart that is, a cart that is pulled by an ox. The fourth question. What do you understand by economic rent as used by von Tonnent? What do you understand by economic rent as used by von Tonnent? Economic rent is a profit a farmer gains for growing his crops on a piece of land and because of its more favorable location over another piece of land. Meaning that economic rent is a profit a farmer will get after paying his rent and removing the cost of production. That is economic rent. Assignment for our next lesson. Name the major agro industrial plantations in the center and northern regions of Cameroon. Name the major agro industrial plantations in the northern and center regions of Cameroon. The references we used to bring up this lesson, as you see on your screens, these are the references. And our next lesson, we shall look at arable agriculture in Cameroon. Una tege si matege yop, una tege minga matege nyum, una tege majang matege ndom, mane tambia niña ne injubia yen, ngani bana matege mot, ngani la kiri watege ndom, esoki na bia jinkido, mane tambia niña ne injubia yen, tam tam amote tam zabike, Tam tam a tonge tam zabike tam 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 a mote tam zabike mane tam bia niña ne injo bia yen 